Not, not since most improved on my JV uh, baseball team have I received an award. And one, <laughs> terrific. Uh, the only thing I know in the world, quite literally, is media bias. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a savant accepting this award on the only thing I know. I want to, uh, for the new media people out there, I want to get it on record. I heart Mark Morano. Uh, <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, what we endeavor to do, we whistleblowers and, and troublemakers out here in the new media who uh, venture forth to attack uh, the mainstream media for its uh, bankruptcy, uh, is to uh, show that neutral media that, that has, shows neutrality towards Al Qaeda. And, and, and towards terrorists, uh, they actually aren't neutral when it comes to uh, putting a mirror up to who these people are and, and shining a light on the corruption that, that is the mainstream media. I got involved in this racket quite accidentally. And I'm kind of a polite, not a polite person, but I'm kind of a gregarious, lighthearted person. And I, I like laughing, I like going out and having cocktails with people, I like going out to dinner with people. And so in what I started to do, I started to go out and have cocktails with the, the people in the media and because I was involved in news aggregation, these people wanted to become my friend. I'm like, this is kind of interesting. Uh, it's, it's an awkward dance. It's, I, I'm like, sure. I want to convert these people to the, to not, not, to, not to conservatism. Um, They'll eventually get there if they get to see the facts. I want to hold these people accountable to the standards that they offer at the J School. Uh, that is objective journalism. That's what they say, that they, they go in there and they take their ideology and they leave it at the code check. Well, that's in fact not true. And as long as these people have symposiae in which they discuss everything from Craigslist to ruining their business you know, but they will not bring up the media bias thing. They go after Bernie Goldberg when he dares to tell the truth about what went on in, in the newsroom. Isn't it interesting that these people want to protect whistleblowers unless it's a whistleblower against their racket? And their hatred towards anyone that would dare challenge them. They start going to the DSM you know, thing. They start calling you crazy. You know, this person's crazy. Any person that could possibly think that the mainstream media is biased must be criminally insane. When you meet these people, like I do, and you continue to go out and have cocktails with them, maybe you are criminally insane. They're not nice people. Uh, they, hold, they hold people that disagree with them in absolute contempt, and this entire new media creation is flummoxing them because average citizens are starting to do the job that they're supposed to do. If they were doing the job they were supposed to do, people would like be getting into like knit crafting, you know, <laughs> war craft, you know, like, you know, like those those user gate friendly games. Homemakers are now the journalists because they want to raise their country, they want to raise their children in the country that they were, you know, born into. But they realize that they can't because the firewall for truth and accuracy and justice is the mainstream media. After years of going out to cocktails with these people and, and telling them, you got to change your ways, and watching the beginnings of new media from the Drudge Report through Instapundit. All of these websites, if you distill down all of the success stories of the early new media and Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity, all they are is media criticism. All they do is take the source material and prove to you day in and day out that these people are lying to you. And what's happening now is, is it's reached a critical mass. There's no turning back. There's no turning back on the revelation that this bed of media accuracy and, and, and neutrality, it's over. It's, it's crumbled right in front of us. And what has happened in our country over the last year 
is pretty amazing. It's not just the exposure of Barack Obama being a, a, a political radical, which was obvious to anyone who paid attention during the campaign to the alternative media, but what has happened, and I almost feel sorry for the left. I'm, I'm not kidding. I, I almost feel sorry for them because their entire political philosophy is crumbling right now because of exposure of what Mark Morano has done on, on ClimateGate. That is one of the primary pillars of their moral superiority is their fundamental belief in global warming. And so for, and their fundamental belief that science, 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 to prove that the science was wrong and to show that their religion was false is devastating to these people. And to prove that their moral righteousness in their place as the fourth estate in our society, it's been devastating to them that we expose them, that, they're, that they act in bad faith and they act in bad faith against the American people. And so we finally had enough of it. I'm going to just show you what I had to deal with today. Uh, Kate Zernicki of the New York Times, are you in the room? Are you in the room? You're despicable. You're a despicable human being. You're the New York Times. What is your headline here? You, you came to CPAC. Uh, to get your, your prey, and here, here's your prey, Jason Matera from uh, Hot Air and also from Young America's Foundation. S this is the headline, CPAC speaker bashes Obama, comma, in racial tones. How can, cons how can conservatives win the youth vote that overwhelmingly went for Barack Obama in 2008? At uh, the Conservative Political Action Conference, apparently some are betting on using racial stereotypes. It goes, into, it goes into a story that does not express that he used a racial stereotype. It is just built upon a bed of lies. It says that he went into a Chris Rock voice. What? She's the one that correlated his voice to Chris Rock. He happens to be from Brooklyn. He was using his voice. But this is what, this is what these creeps do. I'm sick of having cocktails with them. I'm now at war with them. No more cocktails. <laughs> I, I predicted this every step of the way in the acorn story that the left has basically two or three templates when it deals with the majority of the people in this country, the people in the flyover states. Why, why do I refer to flyover states? Because I grew up liberal in Brentwood and the west side of Los Angeles with a sense of moral superiority that I was better than everybody. And then I went to college in the south and I was like, you're so smart. Your brother's smart. Your mother's smart. And I'm like, oh, and then I'd met people throughout the dorm. And, and I was like, this is a really weird conspiracy to put all these uh, <laughs> smart people from flyover states in one dorm. I, I was like, and I came back to Los Angeles. I was like, I live in the weirdest dorm you'll ever meet. There are these people from flyover country. You know those stupid people that you make movies about and you criticize and the, the people in the articles that, that you, you make them out to be stupid and they can't take care of themselves. Therefore, we should be in charge of every aspect of their lives through government. government. I said, you won't believe it. There are people who are actually normal. They're actually funnier than us and they're not as uptight. It's really weird. <laughs> I go, yeah. and they're not snobs. That was when I started to realize, and they, they're like, no, you're wrong about those people. They're, they're, they're ignorant and they're horrible. I'm like, something's wrong with this picture. And so my war that I'm at with is with my neighbors and with my fellow journalist. It's, a, it's an awkward lifestyle, I gotta be honest with you, living in Hollywood and fighting the Hollywood left, uh, residing in the, in the realm of journalism and, and doing this type of stuff and fighting the people that I have to deal with. But to me, it's the most important battle out there. I've tried to analyze it. I've tried to figure out where politics is, is more important. It's not. These people create the firewall by which we cannot inform our fellow citizen to be able to make decisions on how we should govern ourselves. This is how they control us. And we have finally figured it out. And the new media is the means by which we can actually not just start to govern ourselves and start telling horrific truths about our political peril 
and our financial peril because the press didn't report on these things. But we can also now change the equation and we can begin to start changing the narratives. And when you see something like this, Kate Zernicki, <laughs> or Carol Leenig of the Washington Post, when the acorn story began, yeah, you wanted the acorn stuff, so I'll give you the acorn stuff. <laughs> when the acorn story began and James and Hannah, uh, when James came to me, Hannah did, and I met her later in New York, uh, I, I said, whew, what is this d uh, divine providence here that you would find me? Why did, James not, why did James choose to go to a guy who works out of a basement in Los Angeles and not go to Pinch Soulsburger? Because he knew that if, if he saw the acorn tapes, that he would kill the story. He knew that if he went to CBS, that that would happen as well. In fact, I did go to ABC to a reporter there, and, and the person said in confidence, uh, I'm not going to give the person's name, that, that we can't do this story because of the underlying politics of it. I just did it just to test my theory, uh, because that's what I did. I tried to get this story out there using as much media skills as I possibly could because I didn't want it just to be on big government. I wanted every website to see it, including the Huffington Post, because once you, once you see what happened in the Acorn offices, a fundamental narrative that the mainstream media uh, buys into, in fact, it grants them their sense of moral superiority over the rest of us, is uh, they, they believe in social justice, and they believe in economic equality, and these are the great things that when you, when you ask these people who claim to get to have gotten into it for the, you know, because they wanted to be an objective journalist, will out of the other side of their mouth say, well, I got into it because of social justice and economic equality. It's obviously a contradiction. <laughs> and that's why they glommed on to, to Barack Obama. Uh-oh, racial in tones. Uh -oh. These people have such a patron <laughs> these people have such a patronizing attitude towards black people in this country, they should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. And I uh, we're your protectors. You can't take care of uh, yourself, we'll take care of you. Well, I went to college in New Orleans and I I I uh, uh you're not taking, you no, know, I'm sorry, your systems are not working. And so, for we crazy conservatives, comma in racial tones, for we crazy, <laughs> crazy conservatives that look at the great society and go, that sucked. <laughs> On those acorn tapes, when I saw the first one, I, I thought, that's, tremendously weird. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Do you see that, James? Did you see those two people didn't bat an eye when you said you wanted to create an underage prostitution ring? Underage. But James is, is an artist. He, always, he admitted he's an artist. He's not a real journalist. Oh, then it's not real. Then what happened on those tapes didn't happen. He's an activist. Ooh, then we shouldn't pay attention to what's on those tapes. <laughs> They're still not looking at what we put out there, the full transcripts and full audio. And I've said to Media Matters, I've said to John Podesta, who investigated us in the, in the form of a lawsuit, I've said, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll watch the entire videos with you. And we'll have a Q&A with the American people afterwards. They will not do it because they cannot be held account to account for for the fact that they didn't cover it after it happened. They acknowledged it happened, and then they walked away. They acknowledged it existed because we crafted a strategy to force them to, to say it existed. And then the New York Times says, okay, we admitted that it existed. We're going to create systems in the future to make sure that these stories don't, you know, that, that, we'll, that we'll pay attention to them. There was no one looking into what do these tapes mean? These two ladies in the first Baltimore one didn't bat an eye when they said 14-year-old girls, when they said that they, that they were going to bring them over the border illegally and put them into houses. They said, let me bring in my tax specialist. And th have you ever met some, gotten so excited that you go like this? Like, you're like, oh, oh my gosh, love at first sight. They were so excited to meet this young entrep street entrepreneurs that they're like, like, oh, you've got to meet these people. They're fantastic. 
It wasn't just one. It was the most fantastical thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And do you think if that tape were of the NRA, of the NRA being caught on tape, teaching people how to take legal guns and making them into automatic rifles, and, and somebody came in and said, hey, I'm, I'm a southern guy, and I want to I wanna do this, and I go, I... I'm going I'm to make a, an automatic uh, rifle, uh, and I want to go shoot up uh, some uh, schools in the inner city. Uh, and is there the ch a chance in the world that six months later, those tapes wouldn't have been investigated? There wouldn't be a Rolling Stone and Vanity Fair portrait of what those tapes mean, that they wouldn't call them the Abu Ghraib of the NRA. That is why when Carol Leenig of the Washington Post called me up, when the story was for, when they, when we basically forced them to acknowledge the story existed, Carolina called me up and I said to her, I said, I'm interviewing you too because I don't trust you. And, and she said, so what did you think of the first tape? I said, I thought it was very weird. What did you think when you, when you saw the rest of them? I said, hmm, uh, let me think about that. I thought they were the Abu Ghraib of the Great Society. That's what I said. For a fact, I had totally thought that one through. I was very happy that she asked. Uh, and she said, that's not right. I said, excuse me? What do you mean it's not right? She goes, I resent that. I worked on the Abu Ghraib story at the Washington Post. I said, you asked me a question. Do you, who, who else do you banter with? You know, who else? It's only with right-wingers that they feel the need to, to push back when, 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 when we, we state our opinions because they're in this racket for social change and economic justice. And so this, just like the climate change thing, hit on their fundamental religion. You know, I, I live in West LA. I live in Brentwood. I go to Whole Foods to get <laughs> wine every day. I do. <laughs> Not every day, but <laughs> I know these people. The two things that they hold on to more than anything is environmentalism has filled their void for their secularism and their moral superiority on, on race issues. And that, that's why I was a liberal growing up. And when I saw what a crap system they created, I said, I want nothing to do with this. I don't care if my neighbors and my own family members poo-poo me or, or say that I'm, you know, Satan, which they do. <laughs> oh, wait, this is disgusting. This is disgusting what is, what, what's on these tapes. They were systemic. In all of the videos, in all of the cities, we used, we were truthful. We, we said, look, there's one guy by the name of Felix Harris in the Los Angeles Acorn office who in the very public foyer sort of, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 the, in the main area of the Acorn office in Los Angeles, I think James was getting a little bit cocky here, and he's like, hi, I'm prostitution ring, let's create it now. Like, I think he, I think he was too aggressive, perhaps, because the guy's like almost startled and said, I can just help, I can basically just help you fill out forms. He didn't kick him out, he didn't call the police. Those were two things that Acorns Bertha Lewis over and over and over and over told the media. They got kicked out of dozens of office, offices and the police were called. The media kept buying that lie. The media even uh, invited Bertha Lewis to uh, the National Press Club and they introduced her, Jonathan Salant, who was the former president of the National Press Club and he of Bloomberg basically treated her like she was uh, uh, a dignitary from, you know, a, a sacrosanct social justice organization. It was just unbelievable. I'm thinking, this lady has made the press look so stupid because every step of the way that we put a new video out there, she's gone out there and offered up a lie that the next video disproved. And they invite her to speak at the National Press Club. Hannah and James were asked to answer for what they did at the press club. And Hannah and James said, we'd like for Andrew uh, to, to go to the National Press Club. And they said, sorry, he can't go. 
That's because they knew that I would make the National Press Club, a refer the, the speech, the, the talk, a referendum. And I'd say, I'm willing to take questions from any one of you in the room. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, but you need to be honest with me, and they won't. And their racket is imploding at the exact same time that Climate Gate uh, happened. And their concept in the Messiah in Obama, that's crumbling. They'll never be able to recreate that type of comical, <laughs> overwhelming, larger than life. Bush is the worst thing that's ever happened to the earth. And this is the best thing that's ever happened to the earth. What an amazing coincidence. Why don't we, why, 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 he'll solve everything. And even they are noticing the jarring juxtaposition. So we at the forefront of new media who are out there fighting this battle are fighting the journalists because the second you knock down that wall, you don't understand. It's the promised land. It will be the United States of America again. Uh, so come on in. The water is warm. Start filming these people. When you're being interviewed by a journalist, film them back. Use it. And, and use Retracto, the correction alpaca, at big journalism because he will get your retractions because these people are being held to account for the first time ever. Thank you very much. <laughs>